Somebody said amen. 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 I am I am ex excited to actually be here. I'm going to tell you a quick story and then I, I'm going to get um, started. So um, um, Friday, I think it was Friday. Well, good Friday morning. I said, uh, under, I got dressed. I looked at my yard and my yard, my, uh, my grass was high because, because, because it, it was growing. And I had prayed to God that God would grow my grass. And so, so now I got this grass at, at the house. Y'all please listen to me. And so the first thing the Lord told me is to cut it. But I told him, I said, Lord, Lord, it's growing. Lord said, I know, but cut it. It's going to look a whole lot better when you cut it. So then, then, then I was sitting here tripping because, because, because God said, don't I do the same thing in your life? You get to growing. And sometimes you, you get to growing out of control. And I got to, just to make you, keep you looking good. And now, now though, when I cut you, I didn't cut you so you wouldn't grow again. I cut you so you could grow again. I'm just saying that that's just free. I don't know whether that that the blessed in in the body, but but they're just like grass grow and we cut it. So does God cut us so we can grow more. Amen. Amen. I tell y'all, uh, um. We're living in some serious times, and we're just come, coming. A lot of people are saying we're finna come over or, or the out of this COVID thing, but COVID has has left us wounded, has left us scarred, and um, the Lord gave me a message for us this morning so um uh if you give me just a about 20 five 30 minutes amen i'm gonna be done with you amen but but though uh um uh, i got a couple of scriptures I, i'm gonna need to, to read and then we're gonna talk amen y'all don't mind if we talk amen um but the, before i start talking let me let me let me let me, give, let, me, let me point you into the right direction. Uh, Proverbs chapter 5, 21 through 23. Proverbs chapter 5, 21, 23. Hold your finger there and then flip over to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, Proverbs 25. We're going to go to Proverbs first. Proverbs 5, 21 through 23. I hadn't did this in a while, but I got my beautiful wife with me today. Yes. Lady Nicole, you here? Yeah. I can't hear you. Lady yes. Nicole, you here? Yes, yeah. Amen. I want to just make sure people hear that I'm not just saying this. I got my beautiful wife with me. She going to read, she going to read these three verses for us and then we're going to go straight to Matthew and then we're going to just start talking a little bit. Amen. Proverbs 21 22, 23 reads like this. For God sees everything you do, mm -hmm. and his eyes are wide open as he over observes every single habit you have. Come on now. Beware that your sins don't overtake you, and that the scars of your own conscience don't become the ropes that tie you up. Mm. Those, 23, uh -huh. go ahead. Those who choose wickedness die for lack of self-control. For their foolish ways lead them astray, carrying them away as hostages, kidnapped captives, robbed of destiny. Amen. Just so you, you don't miss it. It says, 21 says God sees everything. Every habit, his eyes are wide open to every single habit. God sees everything and his eyes are wide open to every single habit. Habit. Somebody say, Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Amen. Lord, help me. 22 says, beware that your, your, somebody say, my sins. My sins. 
My sins. Okay, okay, okay. Y'all said that kind of cute. Somebody say, my sins. My sins. You say, beware that your sins don't overtake you. Wow. Your sins. Your sins. Not your mama's sins. Not your sister's sins. Not the um, government sins. But your sins. Your sins. I'm sorry, uh, Nisa. I said yo. You know, and Nisa looked at me like, uh, come on, uh, you got to say that thing right. I'm gonna say it right for you. Yo sins, amen. Yo sins. <laughs> Ooh, I love her too. Amen. Don't that the yo sins don't leave you scarred. Your conscience. That your sin don't scar your conscience and tie you up with ropes. Somebody say, my sins. Have left me scarred, tied up. Oh, yeah, 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 Lord, my sins, my sins. And then it say, those who choose wickedness die from a lack of self-control. Self-control. Somebody say, I need self-control. Need self control so it don't leave me hostage. When whenever I see words, I think of movies. Anybody seen the hostage? Uh uh uh. uh I think it's Bruce Willis had uh, under him and the, his son. They were left in their own house, hostaged, it's trapped in your own house. Ain't that amazing? How you can be trapped in your own house and you're still hostage? Because of yo, yo. Y O, <laughs> yo. I ain't saying yours. I say yo. yo. You know what I'm saying? I got to talk like I'm from the hood sometimes, y'all. Yeah, because I don't never know who tune in. And um, and uh, under uh, um, Night Nation Dance Team, thank you for interlocking all cultures in your dances. I like yeah. that too. Amen. Because though we finna. We're going to stop ministering to the world and not to just the people just around that look like us. Amen. Right. So thank you for incorporating all ethnic group. Amen. Yeah. Uh, uh, under Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 through 30. 28 reads like this. Are you weary? Huh? Are you weary? Uh-huh. Carry a heavy burden. Mm -hmm. Come to me. Uh-huh. I will refresh your life. Come on. For I am your oasis. Simply join your oh, life. Oh, oh, oh. Slow down, slow down. Okay. Slow down. Machine that Reagan now. Come on, slow down. Slow down. You at the Trinity Center. Tell LC to slow down. <laughs> LC. What? Well, see, I call her L.C. because I call her Cole. Amen. Everybody say, who is L.C.? Lady Cole. Okay. L.C. <laughs> be ready to go. Amen. So, question, question. Are you weary? Are you heavy burdened? I don't think Bob asked you questions that that the, you don't have the yes behind this. So um, can I say this? Can I get the liberty to say this? You are weary. You are heavy burden. And I like the Bible when it don't when it don't leave you just with a question, but it answers both questions with two words. Where well, three words? Two, three, three words. Three words, right? Three words. Come to me. Yeah. 29 reads like this. Simply join your life with mine. <laughs> okay, so, so it's simple. Okay, go ahead. Learn my ways, and you'll discover that I'm gentle, humble, easy to please. Mm. Mm-hmm. You will find refreshment and rest in me. You with everybody's looking for rest. And nobody's looking for, like the scripture says, me. Everybody won't rest and would want nobody to come to me. I ain't talking about me. I'm just talking about the, the scripture says me, and this me is Jesus. You won't want nobody to come to Jesus. The third says this. For all that I require of you, 
will be pleasant and easy to bear. And that was the TBT version. Same scriptures out of the um, Message Bible. Like I, I like both of them, so I had to get you both of them. Amen. Double for your trouble. Amen. Let's go. 28 says this out of the Message Bible. It says this. Are you tired? Huh? Worn, mm -hmm. worn out? Mm -hmm. Burned out on religion? Mm -hmm. Come to me. Mm -hmm. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. Mm, come on. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The 29 says this. Walk with me mm -hmm. and work with me. Mm -hmm. Watch how I do it. Mm -hmm. Y'all, please listen to this next statement. I love this. Go ahead, baby. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Mm. Learn the unforced rhythm of grace. Love that. Love that. I'm going to talk about that just a little bit later on. Amen. Somebody say, I need grace. I need grace. Uh, you got to learn it, though. You got to learn that grace ain't forceful. You got to submit to it. Because <laughs> it's got a rhythm that, that, that won't make you get on rhythm, but it'll cause you to be in rhythm when you submit to it. Amen. Go ahead, baby. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. 30. Keep company with me, mm -hmm. and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Amen. So I want to I wanna talk from this thought, and certainly with the help of the Holy Ghost. Um, I'm hurting, but I'm coming to Jesus. Somebody say, I'm hurting. Hurting, but I'm coming to Jesus. But I'm coming to Jesus. Yes, I'm hurting, but I'm coming to Jesus. Y'all don't mind if I if I build build me a, a platform that I can stand on, Amen. So uh, and I, I gotta give me some good wood because I I'm kind of like a heavy guy. So so uh, and I, I gotta bring some oaks in here. So it's gonna take me a little time to kind of um build this platform. But but once I get there, you're gonna know it, Amen. Y'all check this out. Is there really rest? For the weary. Is there really help for the hurting? Is there really strength for the weak? Is there, is there really rest? I know people say that you can find rest in the church, but is there really rest for the weary? Is there really help for the hurting? Is there really strength for the weak? Y'all see now, um, Y'all please follow me, please, please, please. Let's get on FM, amen. Let's get on FM. I saw, uh, I heard some people um, on the teetering between FM and AM, and you came through the system. So let's get on FM, amen. Everybody on, on FM now, y'all watch this. We all were born in a world of sin, which means the world only had hurt in store for us. We were born in a world of sin, which means the world only really had hurt in store for us. Y'all follow me? I'm going somewhere. We've experienced so much of this world, but, it, but all it really left us was in pain. It left us hurt, and it left us lonely. This world left us in pain. This world left us hurt. This world left us lonely. This world. Somebody say this world. This world. This world, this world left us in pain. This world left us hurt. This world left us lonely. This world, okay. At times, you feel like have you ever felt like at times that you were trapped without a way out? I know, I know under these ain't good the confessions inside the church, but, but some of y'all shook your head real heavy on the inside. You know what I'm saying? At times, do you feel like you're trapped without a way out? And you thought that hurting was all you could look for or expect for the rest of your life. You know, some of us have come acquainted with pain. You know, uh, uh, under I um I um I listen to shows and listen to 
commercials, and they talk about this chronic stuff. And so when you have chronic pain, that's a pain that, that you're supposed to put up with for the rest of your life. You know, like, like uh, 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 the arthritis can be this chronic pain that I'm supposed to put up with for the rest of my life. Really ain't going to get no better. Really don't have nothing but, but, but the, a pain pill for you that will leave you uh, under, with the other symptoms for the rest of your life. And so then we think like in life, it just must be my lot, doc, to have pain for the rest of my life. I'm supposed to hurt for the rest of my life. I'm not supposed to find a good relationship for the rest of my life. Everybody's supposed to misuse me for the rest of my life. I'm supposed to be hurt for the rest of my life. That's, what, that's the final say-so in the world is that this is just my lot. I'm supposed to be picked at for the rest of my life. I'm supposed to be looked fun at the rest of my life. I'm supposed to be this for the rest of my life. I'm supposed to be that for the rest of my life. I'm just supposed to be hurt for the rest of my life. And when I find good news, it only lasts for a minute because hurt is right behind it. They had this song out a long time ago, Tony. It says, I can't get no satisfaction. And so I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to never be satisfied in life. So what is the Bible talking about when it says I'm supposed to be satisfied with him? See, y'all listen to this. This world really had us trapped thinking that pornography was my outcome. Rage is my outcome. Anger is my outcome. Anxiety, pride, drugs, drug addiction, sexual identity crisis. It's my final outcome. I'm supposed to be confused for the rest of my life. I'm supposed to live from paycheck to paycheck rest of my life. Sexual and physical abuse for the rest of my life. It would have been funny if the sexual abuse only happened outside the home. But then I got uncles that's done mess with me. I got aunties that's done mess with me. I got granddaddies that's done mess with me. I got grandmamas that's done mess with me. My mama messed with me. My daddy messed with me. We got all kind of hurt in this world. But am I supposed to be hurting for the rest of my life? Is there really help for the weary? Or do I keep fixing my problems through pornography? Do I keep fixing my problems through drug addictions? Do I keep fixing my problems hurting other people? Because hurt people hurt people. Well, I have this sexual identity crisis always happening on the inside of me. Where, because I've been messed with, because I've been mishandled, I don't know who I am now. Is there help? Is there rest for the weary? And all of these things really only left us scarred and hurting. Now, now that we're here wondering, where will I find comfort for my pain? Where will I find comfort for my pain? Oh, Y'all give me just a few more minutes. I'm about to get there. Where will I find comfort for my pain? Where will I find help for my hurt? Where would I find freedom from all my scars? Is there any redemption from this world we trapped in? Is there any redemption 
for this world we trapped in. I got a commercial for you. Second Timothy 2, 22 through 26 out of the Message Bible reads like this. Run away from infantile in indulgence. Mm -hmm. Run after mature righteousness, mm -hmm. faith, love, peace. Mm -hmm. Joining those who are in honest and serious prayer before God. Go ahead. Refuse to get involved in inane discussions. Mm -hmm. They always end up in fights. Mm -hmm. God's servant must not be argumentative. Say that one more time. God's servant must mm -hmm. not be argumentative. We ain't got time to be arguing with, with people. Come on, come on. Say, say it one more time. God's servant mm -hmm. must not be argumentative. Go ahead. But a gentle listener mm -hmm. and a teacher who keeps cool. Ooh, Lord, 25 says. Working firmly but patiently with those who refuse to obey. Mm -hmm. You never know how or when God might sober them up. Who might? God might sober them up. Who might? God might sober them up. I like that. There, go ahead. With a change of heart mm -hmm. and a turning to the truth, mm -hmm. enabling them to the escape the devil's trap where they are caught and held captive, forced to run his errand. Amen. So then there is help for the weary. There is hope for the hopeless. There is a way out of the devil's trap. Traps. Today, we refuse to let this world keep thinking that it will always own our life and have the final say over our life. Y'all listen, I got to talk to us just for a minute. We refuse to let this world keep thinking that it owns us. I refuse to let this world keep thinking that it has the final say over my life. Refuse, I refuse to allow it. We should be tired by now. We should be tired by now. Worn out by now. With with the way this world has left us trapped and addicted. Somebody say, somebody say, I ain't addicted. I don't do drugs. Yes, you do. We're all addicted to something. We all have unhealthy addictions. We all have unhealthy addictions because the world left us like that. Having idols. Old Testament called them idols. You know, some of us can't go to bed without looking at TV. An addiction. Unhealthy addiction. Some of us can't do this without, some of us can't even start our day right without coffee. And you tell me you ain't addicted. Huh? Some of us can't walk past a chip aisle. Some of us can't have no good night without rocky rolling ice cream. Some of us can't have a good day if my car ain't shined up. Unhealthy addiction that the world left me with. But I refuse to let the world think it has the final say on my life. I refuse to let the world think I'm going to stay trapped and addicted. That's why we should look. That's why we should be looking for a redeemer, for a ransom play payer to free our lives from destructions. So, I'm, so now I'm looking for a redeemer. I'm looking for a ransom payer because I'm trapped and I need to be rescued. So I'm looking. Jeremiah, we got another commercial. Jeremiah 31, 1 through 3 out of the message of the Bible. Y'all please listen to this. Reads like this. Verse 2 reads like this. Go ahead, baby. This is the way. I put it. Mm -hmm. They found grace out in the desert. Mm -hmm. These people who survived the killing. Mm -hmm. Israel, out looking for a place to rest. Come on, 3. Met God out looking for them. Mm -hmm. God told them, I've never quit loving you, 
and never will. Lord have mercy. I think some of us missed it. So let, let, let's slow it down for you. I'm going to slow it down for you and tell you what, what the Jeremiah is, um, is talking about. Children of Israel was in captivity. Now check this out. They found grace in the desert. These people who survived the killing, they were out looking for rest. Y'all listen at this. And they met God looking for them. Anybody hear that? I wonder if I go looking for something where I meet God looking for me. And God told them that though, I'm going to be honest with you, I've never stopped loving you. Always have loved you. I got to run, y'all. Let's go. Okay, so then uh, I, was, I was hurt by the world. Now I will be healed by the word. So I'm leaving this world and coming to Jesus. Somebody say, say I'm leaving the world. I'm coming to Jesus. Today. Today, 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 today. Let me slide up just for a minute. Let me, let me tell y'all what, what the, we're going to do, though, today again. Today, I'm writing another letter, Kimi. I'm going to write another letter. How? Okay. Today, I'm going to write another letter okay. to let my past know and the hurt and the pain that I've I will let all the pain and the hurt that I've been through, that I'm moving on, I'm changing addresses, I'm changing my number, I'm done with this. So, I'm writing a letter, an another letter. Okay. And letting my past know, all my pain know, that I'm moving from here. Y'all okay. know. Some of y'all done, done, done had these letters written to you. I'm changing my number on you. Why am I changing my number? Because I don't want you contacting me no more. I'm changing my address. Why I'm changing my address? Cause, because I don't want you coming by my house no more. I'm changing everything because I'm done with this. I found someone who has always loved me. Jeremiah 30, 25 out of the message says this. I will, I'll refresh Tired bodies. I restore tired souls. I found somebody. To myself, I found somebody, I found somebody. who has always loved me. Normally, I wouldn't do this. However, let me go and tell you what the, my new address is. Normally, I shouldn't do this, but let me go and tell you what, the, what, the, what my new address is. It's 888 New Beginning Avenue. Heaven 27158. That's my new address. The two in my zip code stands for unity. The seven conveys completion. The one conveys the unity of the Godhead. The five conveys God's grace. And the eight conveys new beginning, new order. I've got a new beginning. I've got a new order. I'm on my way to my new address. And just so you will, just because you might be asking me, so what's your new number? I'll tell you my new number. My new number, Kim, is... 247-272-3478. No, 73. I'm going to say it again. My new number is 247-272-3473. And the, and the acronym is this. Has she put it up there yet? Go on and put it up there. Uh, slide it up there for me. The new acronym is this. It's coming, y'all. The new acronym is A A H P A R A D I S E. I'ma say it again. The number stands for A H P A R A D I S E, aka 
better known as R Paradise. My phone number stands for R Paradise. Got a new number, got a new address, got a new zip code, got a new area code that stands for heaven. I got a new unity. I'm complete. I have unity with the Godhead. I, I found grace. And I found a new beginning. You heard me. I got a new day. I've got a, I've got a new life. I'm headed in a new direction. On my way to my new destiny. Which is heaven. So before I close. Can I leave you with some stuff. With a few reasons why I decided to come to Jesus. I came to Jesus because he is hope for the hopeless. I came to Jesus because he is rest for the weary. I came to Jesus because he is help for the hurting. Mending for the broken. Bearing the burdens. He is the wonderful counselor. You don't hear me. He is the mighty God. He is the everlasting father. I came to Jesus because he is my provider and my protector. He is the great I am. I came to Jesus because he is after and omega, the beginning and the end. Yes, I came to Jesus because he is Lord of Lord. Came to Jesus because he is a savior and shelter through every storm. I came to Jesus because he is a savior and shelter through every storm. I came to Jesus because he is a savior shelter in every storm. I came to Jesus because he is my savior shelter from every storm. Why did I come to Jesus? Because he is a comforter. He is a counselor. You heard me. He is a comforter. He is my counselor. Can I take it a little personal? He is my comforter. He is my counselor. He is my prince of peace. He's my author. He's my creator of everything. Who is he? He is my defender. He is my deliverer. He is my help. He is my healer. You don't hear me. I got to run. But I told you when I get there, you will know it. I'm there now. You should know it. He is my defender. He is my Rocky. He is my Mike Tyson. He is my giant slayer. Who is he? He is my healer. He is my helper. He is my king of king. Y'all don't hear me. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry from the waters, from the waters, from the waters. He didn't take me out the water, from the water. He saved me, now safe. Am I? Psalms 25, 15, TB 
NET version says this. Rescue me, Yahweh. Rescue me, Yahweh. For you free my feet from every trap. The world trapped me. Yahweh rescue me. The world trapped me. Yahweh rescue me. I got to get out of here. I got to go home now. But let me, but the, let's get back. Let's go back a few verses. That was Psalms 25, 15. Let's back up to Psalms 24, 17. And I promise you, I'm going to get out your hair. Y'all should, y'all should know this. It should sound familiar. Just a different translation. Seven says this. So wake up, you living gates. Lift up your heads. Lift up your heads. Your doors of eternity. Welcome the king of glory. For he is about to come through for you. Some of y'all missed that. I said he is about to come through for you. You asked, who is this king of glory? The answer is, Yahweh is this king of glory, armed and ready for battle. Yahweh, invincible. Yahweh, invincible in every way. I said, Yahweh, invincible in every way. So wake up, you living gates, and enjoy. Fling wide open your eternal doors. Here he comes. I said, here he comes. King Glory is ready to come in. You ask, who is King Glory? I'll say it again. He is Yahweh, armed. Yahweh, ready for battle. Yahweh, the mighty one. Yahweh, the invisible commander of heaven's host. Yes, he is the king of glory. I like this last part. Pause. In his presence. Woo! Yahweh's here. So Paul. In his presence. When Yahweh shows up. You should. In his presence. When the king of king. Shows up. All you gotta do is. In his presence. Y'all don't hear me. Yes. I'm hurting. But I'm coming to Jesus. Yes, I'm hurting. I'm abused. I've been misused. I've been all of them. I can't get no satisfaction. But guess what? I'm coming to Jesus. Coming to Jesus tired of this world I'm coming to Jesus the only real solution to my problem mama would have said it like this she would have said Jesus is the answer for your little world Joe today above him there is none other little Joe cause Jesus is the way she would have said you might have some problems some mountains you can't climb places of despair and peace you cannot find reflections from the old day seem to face you every day but listen to Joe this one thing I'm sure 
this one thing I'm sure of that Jesus is may God bless I gotta get out of here may God bless go ahead go ahead go ahead God bless and keep you is my prayer don't forget that Jesus is your answer for your world today God bless you living life in we want to thank you for watching and if that word blessed your life and you're saying to yourself I think I want to be saved Romans 10 and 9 says if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved so repeat after me Father I ask you to come into my life I ask you to forgive me of my sins I believe you have raised Christ from the dead, and I believe now I am saved. So let us pray. So dear Lord, we just bless you for this day. Lord, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for being our Father, the God that comes after us, the God that loves us, the God that wants us to be saved, the God that wants us to be healed and free. Lord, we thank you for salvation on today. Lord, we thank you for coming into our lives, Lord God, so that we can experience new life on today and live out each and every day of our salvation, God. Lord, we thank you for it. We honor you and we give you praise. And this is your son, Jesus, that we pray. Amen. Enjoy your new life. Thank you so much for joining us on today. We pray that this message has been an extreme blessing to your life. Please also consider joining us every Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. for our Morning Glory Corporate Prayer on Free Conference Call. You can also join us on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. for our refuel service, which is held on Zoom. Every first Thursday, we will have intercessory prayer at 7 p.m. on Free Conference Call. So make sure you join us then as well. Here are three ways to give. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe and follow us on Facebook as well as YouTube. Well, Team Trinity, remember, we love you. Have a great week.